All right, guys, I know I usually edit this stuff all nice for you, but this is the third time I've tried to record this, so you're getting the short, short version with mistakes and crummy playing. So, welcome to your In Too Deep lesson by Sum 41. Um, so there's a little riff in the beginning. There's two riffs going at the same time. The first one's an E octave. So it's kind of like this E octave, open, two, open and then one on the G string, followed by the open A string, and then on the D, one, two, four, one on the G, so. While that's going on, there's an upper riff that's kind of outlining um, an E chord. So you take a D chord, you shift it up a whole step, two frets to the right, and you've got this little ar E arpeggio. So this little, and then switch fingers, but keep it in the same note. So those two are going at the same time. Then it goes into power chords, so straight up, fifth, muted. Now that's the lower part. If you're doing this upper part, you can actually keep that going and just do little offbeat strums. So you got kind of an E by making a D chord in the fourth fret, and then you got an A and you're adding the root to the top, just like I've got a feeling. Like that. Alright, so chorus. Um, you've got this little E to an A power chord with a G sharp bass in there. So like a this little And then, of course, if you're doing the upper part, you can do the 7th fret A position. Alright, and instead of going under, so that's the I'm in too deep and I'm trying, all that stuff. Instead of going under, you've got an E, D, to an A. Alright, up above in my head, instead of going under. So E, D, A. It's really pretty simple. Um, you've got this little octave riff. Which one guitar can do while the rest of us are still doing the E to A riff there. And that little riff's going to come back a little bit later on in the song. Okay, so the second verse has this stop time thing, this one, two, three. So all we're doing is throwing in a G sharp minor, fourth fret, E minor position bar chord there as like a fill chord. So you've got this little, this time I take you out with my mind with you. Two, three. Okay, so you're just adding in a passing chord of a G sharp minor, fourth fret, E minor position. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. Power chords. And then into the next chorus. The next chorus has an extra instead of going under and instead of going. So it's a little double one. Just follow along with the chart and you'll be fine. So then we get to the solo. There's a little pre-solo part with that octave riff again. But then this time instead of going E to A, it's just straight up. So it's straight up E to an E. And I'm doing it as sliding the uh, A string from 5th to the 7th fret. Just the way I like to slide octaves. You could slide up to the flat. You just have to be a lot more accurate there. As you can hear, I kind of sliding around it a little bit. That's my preferred way. Okay, so the solo. Two solo parts, both playing at the same time. They actually start in unison, and then they break out in a little harmony. So they're starting with this little 5 4 0 oh thing on the E string. 7 5 0. Oh. And that's where they break out. The first part, the upper part, is going to go to the F-sharp in the second fret and go. So it's 2, 4, 2, 4, 5. The lower part's going to go to the B-string fourth fret and do a little 1, 2, 1, 2, 4. So you've got this. Or you can do. All right. Now, the upper part that did is going to move on with this. which is kind of like a little G sharp A, B, A, G sharp. And then we go back to... And 
and then we go to the 16th fret for a half step bend. Right there. That's where it splits apart now because the other part does lower harmony. And while the other guy's doing the, you're just going to pedal an E. So you're going to go to the 5th fret on the B string and the open E and just do a little. So if I combine them together, you'll kind of hear this little. It's, it's, cool. it's a cool little effect. Um, then you join them again for the. And then, and then you're going to go to the 17th fret for a whole step then, which should sound like that. But if you're bending a whole step like that. So to recap, upper part of the solo, lower part, seventeenth fret, whole step bend. Okay, so the bridge after that. By the way, the chords during the solo, E, F sharp minor, D, A. So there, second fret E minor, fifth fret A, fifth fret E. The bridge keeps the same chordal rhythm but just changes it to E, F sharp minor, A, B. And then obviously at one point it changes to a straight up eighth note strumming. And that's pretty much it. You know, the ending of this tune has a little, it adds in an extra C chord and the instead of going under. And it only does it in specific points. So just read the chart and practice along with the tune. So it does E, D, A, C. So that instead of going under, instead of going under, instead of going under. So the thing that's tricky about it is it does it once, then it goes back to normal, and then it does it again. Um, so it's like normal, then it adds the C, then it doesn't add the C, then it adds the C a whole bunch of times. Uh, and then at the end you just have that riff again. Kind of echoing in the background at the end. You'll hear it and you should practice that a little bit too. It's not too hard, these riffs aren't too hard, and I do expect you to be able to play both parts of the solo. Piano guys, you're on your own for this one. Come up with something creative. Read the chart and try something interesting. There's no piano on the original, so there's lots of room for you to do. I played it a bunch of times on piano with some cool stuff, so I'm sure you can figure it out. So good luck with this tune. I'm sure you guys will do fine. I just thought this guy had to do it, and he can already do it with the pull-off, so there's no reason why you can't. Say hi to guitar class, buddy. There, see, that's him saying hi right there. That's what he does. All right, see you guys soon.